everything takes time. Nothing's going to come to you in a second. Mm -hmm. And then like when you see that improvement, that's what you got to work for. It's like seeing the improvement, you'll see the point, you'll see what you've done. And you just got to trust the process. Hello and welcome to the Wellness Dojo podcast where we provide real solutions to real health and wellness problems. Joining us today is Tay Odinsky, aka Tay Tayski, an exceptional painter and illustrator who shares with us the joys and tribulations of art itself. She teaches us the importance of trusting the process so that you can start to create real life results that benefit your body, mind, and soul. Let's get into it. Okay, welcome to the Wellness Dojo podcast. Well, we're excited to be here today uh, with my co-host, uh, Dr. Riley Anderson. I'm Kyle Craig, and today we're excited we have Tay Odinski here with us, we're also known it. as Tay Tayski. Tay Tayski, yeah. In the house. In, in the house. house. Oh, so, um, yeah, you're welcome. We're excited to have you here. Um, you're a painter for the people. Painter for the people. I coined that name myself. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Awesome. I like it. Yeah, yeah and, and you, yeah. you graduated from... Uh, the Alberta College of Art and Design, yep, right? Yep. yep, it's a university now, so I can pretend I have a university degree. <laughs> but uh, I graduated with a Bachelor's of Design majoring in illustration. Okay. It took me about a half extra year. It took me four and a half years. I had a little dropout year in there, but came Perfect. back strong to finish her off. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love a comeback story. Yeah, you, it's it was a big one. It was a big one. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, before we kind of get into the discussion around art and painting and, and all of those fun things, can you tell us a little bit about wh how you got into it in the first of place? Of course. Um, I just naturally went towards it when I was younger. I just grew up always drawing, um, always having a sketchbook, always being that little weird art kid in her room, painting her feelings away. <laughs> and I was just lucky that my parents helped with that. They would, all my presents were always art supplies. They just kind of let me do my own thing. Um, so I was just known as the girl of the art girl always. And I truthfully never ever thought it would be a job um, until after I graduated high school, just kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I had some friends who went to ACAD and they're like, oh, you draw, like, come check this out. And the first year in, I was like, wow, this is amazing that what I love to do and grew up doing, I could put towards my career and do it every day and get paid for it, which was pretty crazy. No doubt. Yeah, <laughs> literally, it's, <laughs> it's it, still crazy. <laughs> I know, it's a crazy concept still, even to me of like, to do something that you love and like be able to make money doing it, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's wild. But you've built a really strong following, mm -hmm. as I said, on like Instagram mm -hmm. and on social mm -hmm. medias. Um, and you're also, you have a studio now too, right? I do. So I've been full time for about seven years. I graduated in 2015 and uh, I always worked from home, a little room somewhere in whatever home I was in. And just this year I took the plunge and now I work out of home in my own professional studio, Ooh. which is kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of challenges that have come with it, but it's in the end, it's going to be a positive change. Um, I'm getting a little bit of work-life balance, which never really happened before. Yeah. But as an artist, like I was always, however I felt in the moment, like I need to paint, but now it's like, oh, but I have to drive mm. 20 minutes <laughs> to get to that. So it's just kind of learning how to hone in that yeah. creativity when the time is right. Yeah. I was, I was thinking something just in case like, there's ever a listener that can't quite make it. To, can we do a shout out for the website early on oh. for the people that are just listening in the little for, you know, <laughs> please listen to the whole episode. Yeah. But for <laughs> those of you, for those of you that have just arrived at, you know, your destination in your car or what, or what have you, let's can we do an early shout out for the hey, website here? Sure, I'll take it. Awesome. Uh, my Instagram is Tayteski and so is my website and so is my YouTube <laughs> and so is everything else. That's kind of the that's the name I've took and ran with. Yeah, um, T A Y T A Y S S K I. Correct. K yes, cool. exactly. Thanks for that. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah, I was I was pretty blown away. Um, I think if you go to the website, uh, it's just there's there, you're going to get that nice um, awe inspiring moment, that wow and that visceral reaction. What I found was everything is so recognizable. It's like it's so obvious what you know, what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. not just, you know, the characters themselves. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it's like, oh, who is that? And someone has to say, oh, it's this. And you yeah. Go, oh, yeah, OK, I could see that. It's like it is just so crystal clear but then with the layers and all the colors and everything in the background it's um yeah i guess the word is juxtaposition yeah, yeah, the juxtaposition yeah, totally. of everything was was quite breathtaking so um yeah do you do you feel as though that's an expression 
of your soul so can i go that <laughs> hey, far hey you can okay. you can totally like i don't think about it as often i because i get i've in the recent months i've been asked that a lot and uh so i have to think about it mm -hmm. <laughs> and a hundred percent that is um my style has grown from kind of defying people a little bit in uh in acad our teachers tried to teach us their way of painting and it was always like smooth and controlled and i just hated it like as i was doing it i could feel like this isn't how I enjoy it. And even one teacher too is like, I can see you painting and like, you don't like this. <laughs> He's like, I know you're a painter, but you're not enjoying this moment. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I want. So I started throwing paint around and playing with colors that were not what most people would use, right? Mm. So like, I always play with neons and mm -hmm. rainbow color, which is very out of the norm. And I remember at the start, it's like, no one's going to want that in their house, right? It's like, people want natural colored things or abstract things. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't, that doesn't feel right for me. And so it's kind of just grown with that, like, defines it. Like, I don't really care <laughs> what people want. Yeah. I know what they want, but that's not, I don't create well when I'm like thinking, like, what does somebody else need yeah. and want in that sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's something that we've talked about a lot on this podcast, which is something called flow state, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a term that you are familiar with as For well? Sh well, yes. And it's funny, that Pixar movie that just came out, well, not just came out, um, it's the jazz one. I can't yeah, remember yeah, the yeah. name. Um, Luke, is it, that's not Luca. No, which one is it? I can't remember now. But yes, I know which we'll one get it. We'll about. get yeah. it at some point. It'll come <laughs> in like in 20 minutes, I'm sure. Um, and that it's a lot about that where like these yeah. artists and stuff get into that flow state and 110 percent that is mm -hmm. <laughs> that works for me because I have ADHD. So my brain is just like and you'll see it obviously if you're watching the video, I'll be <laughs> flailing around here the whole time. But when I paint, like my brain just shuts off. And that's the only time it's like quiet. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. and that's would be the flow state, right? It's like once I get into that mode, it's like time melts by. Yeah. 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 We've, uh, we've explored that a little bit um, with like how to benefit mental health. Mm -hmm. um, we've explored it through physical activity, uh, but I, I think there's a lot of parallels with, with something like what you do. And I was thinking about that earlier and I was thinking, well, what are, what are some of the areas of the brain that are really lighting up when mm -hmm. you're doing art? And it's, um, it's a lot of the, the same ones, I think, when you're doing, I mean, your motor, so your motor cortex is, is all fired up. Um, and uh, you're, you're more so in the decision making, like, it's hard to say, but it's, it's, the, it's the area of the brain that's uh, the opposite of what gets hit in fight or flight. Okay. And, you know, just kind of being afraid and, and things like, or anxious. And mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, with flow state, it's that essentially your, your skill set matches the challenge at hand perfectly. It's not too easy, it's not too tough. It's, it's just right. Cool on there. And and yeah, so when you're flowing in that state, you're it literally like the not only just the neural impulses but the the blood flow to the brain, they're away from anxious thoughts and disorganized thoughts cuz uh, not only are you focused, but you're focused in all the right ways. Right. Um, so yeah. That's cool. Have you found that to be uh, like it? It sounds like you used it for therapy early yeah. in life. Unconsciously. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that still? Do you still find it therapeutic, even though you've kind of uh, crossed over the Rubicon into the business side of it? <laughs> well, yes. That's also another conversation that I have often. Is like how people say like. If you do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And I like, not to be negative Nancy, <laughs> but like, I don't believe that. I like, it, now it's a job. Like now mm -hmm. what you love is a job mm -hmm. and you have to kind of navigate through finding a balance of still keeping it for you because yeah, it was my, that was my stress reliever mm -hmm. always. And now the only thing that brings me stress <laughs> is my job, which is painting. So I for sure have to, throughout the years have found this like flow of working for people and then always making sure at least once a month I paint something for myself. And it's something that I don't care about. It's myself, it's for me. Nice. Um, or I will go mental breakdown. Like yeah. I will for sure go in these, um, down spirals if it's just always focusing on job 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 the whole time because mm -hmm. it just sucks the life out of it a little bit yeah if you're constantly just focused on like in, what will make in, you money yeah like making money then mm -hmm. it, it takes the fun out of it I yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent and for the and through the seven years i for sure have there has been some years in there where i'm not producing well and it's like because i'm not focusing on that little tailor right. <laughs> that, that started this whole thing in the first place right yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's really important. Like, yeah. it's, it's really interesting, too, because I, like, I hear all the time people who will talk to me and say, like, oh, it must be so nice. Like, you're doing what you love to do. It must, Same conversations. You, it, yeah. it must make the stress, like, so much less and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's like, 
Well, no, not really. Like it, sometimes it feels like it's harder to balance mm-hmm. things because of that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you feel bad when people say that you're like, oh, I, I feel bad that like, no, I yeah. do. I don't love it all the time. Of yeah. course, I love it more than most people love their jobs. But there's, there is that little thing sometimes that's just like, it's not, it just doesn't rub you the right way. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when people say that, like, oh, you must love it. You're so lucky. It's like, I am. There's also some negative sides to it too. Yeah. 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 When there's, yeah, when there's an exchange of currency, there's expectation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you're not, you're, you're, I'm sure you're still free when mm-hmm. you create these things, but there's a little something else there. Mm-hmm. You're not 100% free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe some people are, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You know, when someone's saying, please paint a portrait of, mm-hmm. you know, my pet that mm-hmm. was the world to me or whatever and uh, i'm choosing you mm-hmm. to paint this, this as very you know as a portrait. memory or yeah something very special right mm-hmm. like i'm i'm sure that has to really <laughs> interfere a little bit with the process Often. right but uh, yeah. And yeah especially portraits because people see themselves differently than images but i'm just mm-hmm. reproducing this image right like i'm looking at this picture and i'm recreating that but if you yourself think like oh i don't like my nose like that or whatever right like there is times where you're just like <laughs> i'm so sorry but this is what you look like <laughs> but then there's like that conversation you have to and you have to keep tweaking it because they're a paying client mm-hmm. right but yeah. yeah, I think like the perfect crossover example of that is like you recently did portraits for yourself, mm-hmm. right? Like yes, my every, birthday every portrait. year for your birthday. Yeah, yeah. So what's that like? Like the worst? Just kidding. It's not the worst. <laughs> it's a good challenge. It's difficult. Sometimes I literally flip the picture upside down so I like detach from the fact that it's my face. Like I'm just Funny. recreating. I'm re- just recreating this image, right? But the same thing, yeah, it's like, I don't feel like I look like that or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started that because Picasso did. And I remember seeing just like your style evolve throughout the years and doing a self-portrait, I thought it was such a cool. And then again, doing something for myself, right? So that's kind of become a tradition for me. Nice. But yeah, it's difficult. It's not an easy portrait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. You're like, I don't like the way my eyebrow yeah. looks and that. I'm yeah. going to just tweak Do that it however I would want it to be. <laughs> yeah. 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 Create the perfect me. Yeah. Did, did yeah. you happen to catch the Van Gogh Expo when it came to town? Not in Calgary, but okay. I saw it in Paris the same time I saw this uh, Picasso thing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool to be like immersed into it. And it just uh, sparked the memory because the joke was like he was the original selfie person yep. because I think it was. <laughs> he painted it, himself too. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. I can't, the number that's in my head is 40 like published self portraits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seems like a lot, but it could have even been more because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he was so prolific. But. Um, yeah, that just that was a, quite the experience. Yeah. But uh, I've heard that um, the human face, especially, I think it's it, um, the book I'm reading right now. They're talking about the mouth is especially hard difficult. to draw. Yeah, <laughs> difficult. It, it almost betrays um, sensical contours of you know. It, do you find that there's any like difficulty with? faces oh yeah yeah i like so i teach paint nights online all the time and people request to do people all the time and i'm like i've been painting for 25 years and it took me about that long to get good at portraits like it's not something that i can just teach you in a Mm. minute even though like i can look at anything and you can like see the outline and paint it there's something about a portrait that you're right like it doesn't really align with that and like hands the worst hands, yeah. are, hands, feet, noses, and mouths are the hardest. <laughs> body, <laughs> just body parts in general. Just humans. <laughs> yeah, humans it's are hard. hard to paint. <laughs> <laughs> but again, the more you do it, it's just you get better. It's a skill that you get better at. I, I imagine with portraits in particular, it kind of one thing that you and I talked about was like mm-hmm. with painting or drawing or anything. Mm-hmm. Like somebody like me who is not very artistic, <laughs> I have not like developed those skills. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I can draw stick people like a decent, <laughs> but like we kind of talked about how like the nice thing about drawing and painting mm-hmm. and expressing yourself in that way is that there's no right or wrong. Yeah. I imagine with portraits or like even with commission work sometimes that that can blur that a little bit yeah. of like they're there is a right or wrong because it's like somebody has to be satisfied. It's a preference or not. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure it does. And it's a being an illustrator. That's what I was trained in at school. Like we're taught to be a tool for somebody else, right? Somebody mm-hmm. who can't draw. We take what's in their head and we create something for them. Well, there's many artists out there that that makes them want to die. Like they don't want anything to do with having to do something for somebody else. Yeah. Right. But again, it's all like doing it your own way. Like my style now is very recognizable. I might be mm-hmm. doing something for other people, but it's my own style it's my own way right type of thing but like talking about the getting better i'm like a firm believer that like you could draw too (laughs) and it's just time like when people Mm -hmm. say like you're so talented it's like 
yes, thank you, but I've put hundreds of thousands of hours into this. Like, I better be good at right. yeah. at this yeah. point, right? I know. I made that mistake when we first started talking. I was like, <laughs> I, I love your work. You're so talented. You're like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you're not? You were like, like I, I put in the work. Yeah. <laughs> but right. like, it's not, a, it's not a mistake, but it is like, I think people see that wrong. Like, the yes, I was born wanting to draw, so I put in the time earlier so i'm just ahead of the game for some people when it comes to the time put in but i do think like people who say because i get that i can draw a stick man yeah. <laughs> i get that often it's like if you literally every day try to draw a giraffe let's just say a giraffe every day give yourself 10 minutes it's nothing crazy by a week and a half you'll have a way better giraffe than you had at the start right <laughs> like there's it's inevitable there's it's mm -hmm. impossible to not get better at drawing if you're just doing it right yeah. which i think is kind of like cool it's like a nice that's i love that about thinking about my career, like I have no idea where it's gonna go, but I just know like my paintings are gonna get better. And mm -hmm. that's a really cool thing to work towards, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a great metaphor too for like a lot of the work that we do with helping people with their health and their wellness mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and just, you know, whether it's getting into shape or whether it's reducing stress in their life or anything like mm -hmm, that, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a great alignment there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and uh, you know, I've just come to this realization that like the secret to life is is repetition. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. And um, there's this concept out there in habit building called the Valley of Disappointment, which mm -hmm. is the line of improvement. It's fairly flat. There's going to be a little bit of fluctuations at first, but then eventually it just kind of starts taking off. And mm -hmm. so the the key is to get people through that valley of disappointment which is like just getting going on something yeah um yeah and i really like what you said about just 10 minutes a day too yeah small Be exactly because that is going to allow people to repeat something uh, much more often throughout mm -hmm. the week and if if I, I i this is how i coach people with meditation i i, I start with them on six minute meditations okay yeah because you know there's all this i don't have time it says mm -hmm. okay do you have six minutes and it's one minute to get settled yeah and then it's just five minutes to meditate and the trick is you want your brain to go that's not a big time commitment i can do that so mm -hmm. you'll, you'll repeat it so mm -hmm. same with drawing um did you structure yourself to practice or is it just something that you almost continuously did? Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't yeah. so much structure. How about today? Is, is there more structure? Or is it? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a fair question. Now I want to know what your sleep schedule is like. <laughs> hey, it's actually way better. If we were talking about four or five months ago, you would have been disgusted by my sleep schedule. <laughs> but I just recently moved also down here into Mahogany. I used to live downtown and work from home. So nice. I just worked all the time. Like I and I worked at night better. That's a creative yeah, thing that's very hard that, for me to, yeah. <laughs> to jump out of. But like I could work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and then sleep through the day for like four or five hours and then get back up and do it again. Like that was my like almost regular schedule yeah. all the time. And then now it's like, okay, I don't work from home. I, I mean, I yeah, I don't work from home. Um, I don't want to be at the studio at all hours of the night. I need to like, it's not long term. It didn't really make sense long term. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm like forcing myself to yeah. like, I haven't been at the studio later than Maybe one, so I was there till three. But I usually am gone by 11, and okay. I sleep by one, and I'm awake by nine. That's good. Hey, that's, that's like a solid set of sleep. That like is. When you're there, like, for a lot of the times mm -hmm. when you're painting and working mm -hmm. on projects and stuff, I imagine you're probably, like, alone yep. for, for most, most of that, of right? Time. It's like, it's like yeah. me time, too. Yep. So, yep. you know, I think that's, <laughs> like, a super important thing, too. For sure. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure. It's like just that. I think that enables you to be able to get into that flow state, too, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just... Mm -hmm focus on one thing only right yeah, shut everybody else out mm -hmm. and that's why i like nighttime right it's like everyone's sleeping <laughs> like, there's yeah. no distractions my feed isn't updating right yeah. it's like yes. it was me yes. alone with the world <laughs> yeah, yeah, your, phone's, yeah. Your, phone's, your phone's not dinging yeah exactly mm -hmm. it was easier to just get into that like flow state yeah yeah. Term, but yeah like yeah i remember i experimented with that like getting up at 4 30 in the morning yeah. kind of thing uh when I was in school and there's there is there's something I don't know what it is there's something magical about knowing that everyone else is asleep yeah. and you're the one up and working yeah yeah for sure for years for seven years like that kept me going for sure and I was so productive and that's the hard part now of moving to this new space is that my hours are reduced but my and my production levels are reduced a little bit at the moment and it's just me trying to like battle with like I don't have to be as hard working as I was at the start of my career but it's hard not to be at the mm -hmm. same time it's like oh I could it's like 11 I have to leave the studio to stay with this new routine that I'm building because I feel so much better that I'm like sleeping at the same time every day mm -hmm. before I was like oh it's fine I can run on three hours of sleep I feel great and then like 
a week of going to bed at the same time and getting that full hours of sleep. I was like, oh, my Atlanta. <laughs> I was not okay. Like, my body feels yeah. so much better now. Mm-hmm. But I'm in the studio. It's like 1130. And I'm like, if I stay here, like, I could knock this painting out. Like, and that's like a very hard thing for me to do is like, no, I gotta stick to that routine. Yes. Like, I'll Discipline. paint this tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like a weird thing. It's like, yeah, I just used to be a painter. I can paint when I want. It's like, no, I have to structure that. It's a job again, right? Yeah. Getting back to this job thing. My mom would always be like, what about people who get nine to five jobs that are artists? Like they have to figure it out and they have to work in that nine to five time. I'm like, I know, (laughs) but it's just difficult to like teach your brain that. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you're on that regular schedule, like your hormones are, you know, they're being synthesized in the right way. And then there's like, you know, even, even estrogen has this, um, it has a synergy with uh, like omega fatty acids to help make serotonin, which is just going to help your overall so mood. And so, yeah. and I feel, a, it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah, yeah. Cool to hear it that way, though. Like, yeah. yeah. So it is. I'm just trying to tell you, it's good. It is yeah. for a good reason. <laughs> yeah. um, I totally understand, like though that. Uh, I hear a lot of like writers. Um, I was a, a amateur musician in a past life too, and like the. <laughs> Yeah, the the late night studio. There's nothing. There's no other feeling like it. You know, at, at one a.m. and and things like that. But I hear even writers of um, like setting an alarm for three in the morning mm-hmm. and just getting up, not even like thinking right. yet, and just start and just start writing. That's so cool. And I think that's cool too. But I think it's it, it, it's also like there's there's the um, I guess it's called the default mode network in the brain, which is where your brain, if you just kind of sit there in an empty room and you're not actively meditating, mm-hmm. what does your brain do? And it normally goes towards some 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 negativity, mm-hmm. some repetition, some sort of problem you're trying to solve. And it's like before that can even uh, that can even start happening, you're already in this other state, which is probably closer to closer to something like flow or yep. something to relaxed and mm-hmm. yeah, in in the mood. So yeah, yeah I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, my brain, I think it's really missing music. It's uh, I used to I used to come up with uh, songs in the middle of the night. And I'd have to do this check. Does this song exist? No, no. My brain's just writing oh, yes. a song, and yeah. immediately like whip out the phone and the the record, and just try to hum it so that mm-hmm. nine it. nine a.m. Riley can listen back. And and I've actually written songs based on that. That's so cool. Um, and you know, I ain't shit, but like Sting <laughs> and Paul yeah. McCartney, I've heard that that's how that's they, they they write songs oh, yeah. too. And yeah. uh, my brain did it again last night. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and it even like was filling in like little like guitar arpeggios oh, over the beat, gosh. and I'm like, oh brain. And you miss music. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so now you know. I gotta get back in there. Yeah, it's telling you something. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah, That's so cool. Yeah, creativity is the best. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> it, it, honestly, I, 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 well, just the brain is just fascinating too. Yeah, right? like and you just whip out a song in your sleep. Like, yeah, it's just so crazy. <laughs> well, and I, and I, I think I think the more creative that you are as well, and I mean, you could probably speak to this, but because you're creative every <laughs> single day, right? Like, but I think the more creative you are, like the more your brain craves that like mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. almost like feed your brain creativity and it mm-hmm. just like soaks it up and it's like oh yeah let's get more creative mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. like ideas just start to flow yeah yeah right? get back to that flow stage right look at that yeah that's right We're full circling the flow stage yeah, yeah. um yeah. you you kind of mentioned like adhd mm-hmm, a little bit mm-hmm. um is that something that you notice like early on in your life and that like art was helping with that no actually i should have noticed early on <laughs> um, my therapist uh diagnosed me i guess maybe like five years ago okay. and it was so nice like it was like oh my god <laughs> that's my brain right it's not like oh i'm not mental it's like oh this i have a person explaining to me like how my brain works and mm. it just like felt so reassuring um but it for sure helped me in my career like because I paint multiple paintings at a time because my brain's just hopping around I get bored of this one I'll go to another one um and obviously like <laughs> the high energy helps <laughs> and, and like being like social and every all those aspects of it like really helped my business grow to mm-hmm. what it is now like I don't think I could have been as successful without my ADHD to be mm-hmm. honest That's cool. um because it just yeah it helps it helps my workflow it helped all that now that I'm getting older I'm learning like it gets worse as you get older it's getting a little bit harder to manage I'm like in the middle of kind of trying to find the right medication to kind of figure it out a little bit. Um, But it for sure, that's where my brain quiets, right? Like it's 
the ADHD never silences unless mm-hmm. I'm painting. So it's just like maybe I naturally went towards it without even like acknowledging that that's kind of what was happening, I guess. Mm-hmm. Just finding the peace in that like, oh, wow, that peaceful, quiet state that uh, I literally never have any other time of the day. Yeah. Uh, something that if I ever have, you know, because I, I see pe- they'll come to me with digestion and then mm-hmm. they'll be like, oh, yeah, I also have, have ADHD and can mm-hmm. you help me with that? And mm-hmm. one of the first questions I ask them is, is it really just a, a problem with keeping attention or you're, 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 you don't have, um, you're not able to concentrate on the things that you enjoy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. enough throughout the day? Mm-hmm. And that normally sparks a bulb and they go, well, actually, yeah, because there are times when I can concentrate, mm-hmm. well, you know, cla- what people would may define as classical concentration, but where yeah. I can get into something Hyper-focused. for hours yeah. and I, I lose, lose my, and it's a, that's, you know, that's not scattered mm-hmm. to, to me. And um, that is one of the first things I ask. And mm-hmm. sometimes parents ask me about, about their kids too. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that, you know, people have to realize is that, you know, you can harness it mm-hmm. like, like mm-hmm. you have, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not just necessarily, you're not just um, beholden to your brain in a victim yeah. of, of your genetics and circumstances. It's yeah. like, you can harness this and channel it mm-hmm. and it can become a superpower. And that's what my like therapist said. She's like, wow, you found the perfect job <laughs> for, yeah. right? Like it would be very hard for me to have a nine to five, like working for someone else being like that type of stuff. I can do all my things in my own way, right? And yeah. it's like very, like obviously helped me excel in that department. Mm-hmm. And she's always like, oh, you're so lucky that, that this worked out for you in this department. And it's again, stuff I never really acknowledged until like now looking back into it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't change it for sure. <laughs> I think it's so cool though. Like, it's like as a kid, like you said, like maybe like not even thinking of yeah. it, I was kind of using this as a tool. And yeah. I think it's just really cool if, if you listen to yourself a little bit more, mm-hmm. even from a young age, like even parents listening to kids too. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm a parent and I, I pride myself on just like really trying to listen and understand mm-hmm. my kids. And uh, I think that's so important. Yeah. That's what stands out to me from what you just said. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you were listening to yourself. It didn't matter like, oh, yeah, I get distracted or something yeah. like that. It was just, yeah, this makes me feel good when I do yeah. this. So I'm going to do more of it. And even like on that, like I remember in elementary school, I would always be the doodler, right? Like a teacher's talking and I'd be drawing on a piece of paper and I would always get in trouble, like focus. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's how I'm listening to you. Like I'm listening, <laughs> but that's how my brain works is like I need to be doing something else so that I can kind of soak it all in but I would always get in trouble I was always be told not to right and right. it's so like interesting looking that back is, at it too I took a some sort of like a team building workshop or it was it has something to do with uh, I was in a corporate job downtown Calgary for a little bit and we had someone come in and it was kind of like those I don't know what you would call them they seemed like a professional development business development kind of coaches and they had all of these props and they were squishy and they were textured and they passed them out and they actually encouraged us Mm -hmm. uh to hold them and and just like feel while we were all talking Mm -hmm. and now that i'm thinking of it it might have almost been to ground us a little bit too Mm -hmm, Um, Yeah, yeah. just kind of get, you know, a little bit more energy out of the brain and into the body. And yeah, I remember it being like an awesome couple days. And I loved just like having the freedom to grab something. And yeah, I think it was like fidget spinners and stuff that kids got like that whole phase that just happened recently. I guess there's all these fidgety things for like, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's like sad to think of like kids being told that they're not paying attention or like whatever when they're like, I am, this is just my own little way of doing it or whatever, you know? Yeah, like that well, and yourself. like we both grew up in martial arts, and in martial arts is like oh, you it, fo- it's very much about like focus. No, when I'm talking, you're listening, and mm-hmm. and I think there has to be a balance there too. Of like you have to like one thing that I'm learning now as I as I teach it is that different students require mm-hmm. different ways of teaching. It's not like this like uniform class of like everybody has to listen like yes you have to learn that there's times in your life where you have to kind of fall in line and Mm -hmm. like do what you have to do kind of thing but uh everybody's a little bit different everybody requires you know different strategies that are going to work better for them and stuff and yeah i think think that's important totally i think it's kind of the world's kind of going in that direction a little bit more now i feel like where people are acknowledging that not everyone's the same not every kid can learn the same like and i think that's such an important yeah and that's not a bad thing yeah yeah exactly very much what you said right you're like yeah like you know at first when you hear about like ADHD or like Mm -hmm. any of these types of things your first reaction for most people is like 
Oh. Like high energy, uh, yeah, you're already distracting. Well, and, and that it's a problem. It's <laughs> yeah. a condition. It's a problem or something. It was like, well, no, it's yeah. it's it's just a part of me. And like, I love how you said that. It's mm-hmm. like you just kind of like harnessed it. Yeah. And you're like, figure out how it works for you. Yeah. And yeah. it actually like made you stronger. Yeah, for right? sure. That's so cool. For sure, for sure. Yeah. And I, ironically, it's uh, one of the best treatments, just kind of natural, is physical mm-hmm. activity. Of course. And we're so constantly struggling. telling people to sit still and stay still. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, what do you say? That's why you're struggling, like right here, right now. <laughs> no, okay. well, well, no. Okay. But physical activity aspect, I know, oh, like yeah. that's just something I need to work into my healthy routine as well. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I'm yeah. like I'm slacking in that department for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, if you are, you know, concerned at all about it mm-hmm. progressing even just a little bit as as you get older, there's mm-hmm. there's that, and then I've looked and what they do is they will take blood samples of mm-hmm. uh, people diagnosed with ADHD and just try to look for um, any type of consistencies about is there like any low vitamin or nutritional mm-hmm, status mm-hmm. and there, there there are there's some really interesting ones okay, so nice. um, the, 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 the typical ones vitamin D mm-hmm. um, omega-3 fatty acids iron vitamin b12 I think that's about it. I don't. I th- that's the ones I know for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I just take two of those. So that's okay, good. good. <laughs> you just, you just gotta, in the summer, you got to get some outdoor paint shops yeah, going. Yeah, that's true. That's well. Now I'm awake during the day, so that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, that makes a big difference, right? Yeah. yeah. I've been popping vitamin D for years because yeah. I was just a creature of the night. For so oh long. yeah. <laughs> but, um, I know vitamin D is the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh, I think that like as we're talking about art, I think mm-hmm, art can mm-hmm. be so many different things, right? Mm-hmm. Like. We're talking more about like painting and drawing mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but but there's a lot of different forms of art, and I think mm-hmm. for people who who maybe do struggle with like attention or just like finding that thing that they can be passionate about, mm-hmm. I think there's so many different ways that you can go about that, right? Like, and express like, yourself, yeah. yeah. And it's like like finding ways. Like I would imagine that for you, are we talk about flow state, but mm-hmm. it's also like very meditative, right? Mm-hmm. You get into that and you're just like flowing and mm-hmm. you're not thinking about it other things. It's it's a very meditative thing. Totally. Yeah. And I always say that I can meditate because my brain's too crazy, but I just like think, well, not crazy, but too wild to going off. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, it's like when I get in that state, it's like, oh, no, I guess that is a form of meditation. It is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, meditation is just uh, training your brain to pay attention to what's happening in the moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really all it is. Anytime someone's focusing on wh- whatever they're grounding, like if it's, uh, I like doing the temperature at the tip of the nose. Oh, okay. Oh, um, like feel as, it? As you like, breathe in, because there's, yeah, there's nerve endings like, you know, on our fingers, toes, but also. Mm-hmm at the tip of our nose so when you breathe in you can feel the cool air coming in mm-hmm. and then when you breathe out it's kind of the warm there's all these different things you can do and there's not one right one but th- there is the underlying purpose of it all and yeah. that's to retrain your brain to pay attention mm-hmm. to the moment so yeah. anytime you're doing that you're meditating and I'm, I'm hearing now a lot more about uh, you can enter meditation through doing the dishes or you can enter it for you know from various things so yeah yeah. Which is a like, cool thing about it. Yeah. Because most people are like, oh, sit in a room by yourself and be quiet. Like, you know, Which, like that's yeah. what you yeah. think. Yeah, and that and freaks like, people out. Yeah, like that's intimidating. Like alone with your thoughts or whatever yeah. too, right? Like that stresses people out too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it can be so many things for me. It's martial arts. Mm-hmm. Like when mm-hmm. I'm, whether I'm teaching or whether I'm competing or whatever it might be, it's like that's my time to like shut out the world. It doesn't matter. Right. If, doesn't matter if I just had a fight with, uh, with my wife mm-hmm, or something. Mm-hmm. Like when I get to that class, it's like it all goes away because mm-hmm. my focus is on like making this as as best as possible. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, I would imagine that it's probably similar mm-hmm, when you're mm-hmm. painting and drawing. And I'm a ringette player too, so I guess it kind of relates to that too. Same okay. thing, like on the ice, you don't yep. think about anything. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's cool. I have a question. Do you yeah. ever get stuck on art pieces? Oh, yeah. You do? Oh, all the time. Yeah. Um, I give them timeouts. <laughs> so I will literally like face, make it face the wall, put it in a closet, like go away. Like don't think about it and work on something else and then come at it with fresh eyes again. But off like daily, I get stuck on paintings. Yeah. Like it's okay. a very common thing. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And like there's always, I picture in my head like how I want the painting to be like roughly. Never looks like that ever. Like confidently, I can say it. a painting has never turned out what I thought it would be in my head. I just like let it. We we'll just see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I time lapse all my stuff. So like on my Instagram, oh, you'll yeah. see I nice. time lapse all the paintings. And it started because when my boyfriend and I got together like seven years ago, he asked if he could watch me paint, and I was like, that's weird. No, because <laughs> at the time like nobody did. Like yeah. it was my own thing. Like mm-hmm. no, Do you that's watch weird. Watch me meditate. Yeah, like <laughs> ew, weird. <laughs> so I time lapsed one to show him, and he was like, put it on Instagram, and that's what blew up my Instagram. Are these like time lapses? Right. And it was so interesting to see people respond to them, but also me like me watching it back is awesome because like i don't 
really remember. Like, I yeah. don't really, I, I couldn't say what it looks like through each stage or how it created because I am in that state. So it's cool for me to watch the time lapse too. It's like, oh, that's how it yeah. came together. Well, I think probably a big part of that goes to that time and effort and repetition. Yeah. Yeah. The same way I'll watch some of my fights back sometimes and I'm mm. like, whoa, how did I move like that? Like, how did, the, how yeah. did I know to move that way when they threw that punch or kick or something? Mm. It's just... Yeah, you get into again flow mm-hmm. state. The term of the I was just going to say the, the term episode. of the episode today. <laughs> <Yeah>. I think, <laughs> yeah. but like it is. It's it's that it's about that repetition. And I think that's such an important thing. Is I I loved that you like called me on that when I <laughs> told you like yeah you're so talented and you're like no 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 don't well, call me talented. <laughs> yeah, I worked very hard yeah, to get here. I'm just right? like I better be good at painting. I've painted thousands, like literally thousands of paintings. Like they better be good. <laughs> yeah, how I feel it's about the it. same way that somebody will look at somebody else who's in good shape mm-hmm. and they want to be there and they're mm-hmm. like oh that's they're so lucky it's, mm-hmm. they, they must just have like good genetics or something it's, it's like, like how well, hard that person yeah was. they've probably worked very hard to get there yeah. and like there's a lot of hardships and stuff that go into it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah i can't think of anything i've ever whether it was playing guitar or, or martial arts or scholastics and now darts that oh, it darts. that it's just not yeah i've 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 probably almost approaching my 10,000 hours in yeah. like 3 years on Love yeah that. yeah it's been crazy intense but uh, <laughs> yeah it's i don't know i don't know maybe our brain just kind of likes to default and make excuse they're not our brain a portion of it yeah. there's yeah. always that portion of it yeah. um yeah so when you get stuck you would suggest just kind of Walk, take taking a breath taking a step back taking yeah. a step back yeah um do you are, are do you get down on yourself like when you step back do you forgive yourself a little bit before oh, yeah. you step oh, yeah. back in yeah like again that's time that comes with time too because for sure at the start like if i like felt like a painting was messed up or whatever i would for sure take it way harder than i do now because i know that every painting's savable like i paint an acrylic paint you can cover up anything like no paintings ever ruined hmm. i've never thrown out a painting i always touch up on it maybe it sits for a year or two there's been some that have sat for a long time but i'll always like touch them back up and come back to them um again fresh mind fresh like a new how do i feel that day like as annoying as i can be sometimes it's like feelings is fully runs my style and my painting technique for yeah. sure you like, sure wouldn't know you get stuck looking at your paintings <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's why i asked but i also asked because we deal with people all the time who get stuck mm-hmm. and they quit sometimes mm-hmm. like sometimes we help them work through it mm-hmm. but sometimes we never see them again yeah, either so yeah. yeah it's i think it's just really important to if if you get stuck just don't don't see it as there, it, that's not the terminal point mm-hmm. right there you know there's like even if you just come back to it again the next day and in those small increments mm-hmm, like just mm-hmm. you don't have to come go back at it all day long because maybe you have some negative feelings associated with it mm-hmm. but just do it a little bit or like maybe strategize on paper about what went wrong like journal a, a little bit approach. yeah a different yeah. approach i'm going through that a little bit right now I'm creating all these courses. I'm creating courses on mental health addiction, uh, exercise and nutrition, Mm -hmm. sports injury and prevention, things like that. And uh, I have still have, even though I coach like getting over resistance, Mm -hmm. I have it. Of course. I have it. Natural. Uh, Right. I I had it on the weekend starting a new presentation and I was just, oh, how am I going to, even though I just, I've just done three. (laughs) Yeah. Like, how am I going to, this is the one that's going to bring me down. It's going to be this one. (laughs) It's so ridiculous. It happens. Yeah, so I'm running in. I get like I'm running into creative blocks just, mm-hmm. uh, just you know, with these, and I find, um, yeah, like if eating mm-hmm. helps me <laughs> too. Yeah. Sometimes you just need calories, yeah. folks. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's easy to forget but, to um, eat when you're stuck in those states yeah. too, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, and if and if you're like getting frustrated, you're stressed out, and maybe you're not feeling like eating yeah. either. And but. you're like, I just need to do this. I can't do anything else. And that's like almost worse sometimes to mm. be like, I can't do all these things I need to until I finish this. But you're mm. stuck. On it, yeah, you know? which is the kind of standard classical thinking of mm-hmm. like society is finish one thing and then go mm-hmm. on to the next. Like you have to stay again. You have to stay focused. Yep. You have to do this. And us ADHD people are like, no, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. Just over here. Yeah. Yeah. Do Do you find that you mention no project ever kind of turns out the way that you imagined mm-hmm. that it was or mm-hmm. that you originally thought? Do you think that helps like exp- that that experience of like seeing projects in your mind and then seeing them differently mm-hmm. but then also having people like love them <laughs> yeah, yeah. like does that even i love them too yeah like, right too. yeah and does, does that help when you look at that and you go okay nothing ever turns out 
the perfect way that I imagined it, mm-hmm. it would, but it, it all turns out. Fully. Like that's, and I, I, when I started teaching these paint nights, these virtual paint nights, um, it's funny teaching adults to paint, like to kids because mm. kids free as a bird. It mm. doesn't matter. They do whatever they want. Adults, they already think they're going to mess it up. They already think they're bad at painting. So every brushstroke is stressful. Everything mm. is just like miserable. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. And I, so I coined, it's not my term, it's Bob Ross's term, but <laughs> trust the process is a huge I yell it in their faces the whole time I'm like just trust it like right now it looks like garbage is fine but trust that anything that you do we can fix and that it will become something in the end like Mm. just trust it so like I even have like a neon sign like trust the process and all the paintings and stuff because it's important and like me too most paintings I don't like halfway through and Dan like my boyfriend always laughs he's like well you're on the right track <laughs> because most of them I like hate them in the middle but again it's like they can come back around because nothing's yeah. permanent it's and what's wrong there's it's only in my head it's like there's no right or wrong like we've talked about that yeah. art there's no right or wrong it's not like a math equation it's just your own decisions of which direction you want to bring it yeah. right mm-hmm. I, was, I was talking to a buddy of mine that was in town and he was telling me that he started painting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And he was showing me some of the stuff he was doing. And I was like, wow, that's really good. He's like the most powerful thing. He's like, when I started, the first thing I ever did, all I did was I just painted the ca- like the back of the canvas, like mm-hmm. just a color, painted right? a background. Like mm-hmm. it was like blue. Mm-hmm. And he said, I, I got emotional. Like, mm-hmm. he's like mm-hmm. I started crying. He's like, for the first time in my life, like I felt like this what uh, this didn't have to be right or wrong mm-hmm. it, was, it could be anything mm-hmm. and it didn't matter if it was the right answer or not the right answer mm-hmm. and he said that's just like such a powerful thing i was like yeah yeah that's that's i think that's the power of art even in martial arts you're judged on whether you did it right or you did it wrong right and i think that's something that's very unique to drawing and painting mm-hmm. is that it mm-hmm. can't be right or wrong. It's just, it's yours, which is a good metaphor for people in life yeah. too. Yeah. Like we think like we have to get to this place in life and this is the right place yeah, at this time. And at this, yeah, yeah, we have to have it figured out and stuff. And no, you just, yeah. just have to just be you and just, it. yeah. Paint your own canvas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of metaphors, like I just heard you, that was, that was a whole metaphor for life. I don't know. If, I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you caught that, but talking <laughs> yeah. about like, you know, things, they might not end up how exactly how you think, but mm-hmm. if you keep trusting the process at the end, you will be given more so what you yeah. need instead of what you yeah, what hey. you thought you needed. It's really maybe what, what you needed. And yeah. maybe there was a struggle within that process that you learned from mm-hmm. and that you needed. I was just listening uh, to, uh, so I stretch and listen to Alan Watts. It's one of yeah. my favorite ways to spend, spend an hour. Um, and the, the most recent one I listened to, he was talking about... Uh, giving up control Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to to get if control is what you want you have to you have to give it up yeah and he was just talking about how you know in in nature the animals like and the trees like no one's delegating Mm -hmm. to like specifically to others you allow things to happen this has actually been the driving force of life Mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. since time immemorial and he was then trying to relate it back to the individual about you know the more that you try to um yeah like like hyper focus on all of the little details Mm -hmm. the more control you're actually letting go of Mm -hmm. in in the long run and there's this uh this wonderful um zazen um thought about you know how you like if you're a leader and how you govern a team and it's uh, the same way that you fry a very small fish, and it's, and it's lightly. <laughs> and and so that's if that's how you govern a team, well, how you as your brain, how do you govern your organs? Uh, your, you know your mm-hmm. your your bodily team, I guess, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. you know body mind spirit kind mm-hmm. of thing. And it and it should it should be a similar approach. Mm-hmm. You're still frying that little fish. It's not yeah. like you're giving up and yeah. just saying, well, I'm just gonna eat it raw. It's like, no, you're still giving it an effort, but but you're not, you're, you know, it's, you're just doing it kind of lightly. And, yeah. and they, you know, they were saying that that's how nature works. That's how the best rulers in, in the kingdom have ever worked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, you don't wanna be tyrannical to your own self either yeah. because it'll just cause you kind of to shut down. It's like, if anyone's had a micromanaging boss, it's the worst thing in the world. Mm-hmm, it doesn't mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so, yeah. So for for people out there, if you're just thinking about starting something new, it's you just start. Maybe even not having expectations is a good it's thing. The best, no, yeah. No expectations is the it's the hardest, but it's the best direction to go. I feel like right. See what happens. 
Yeah, we're missing that in society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think huge. Do you have a favorite project that like you thought? was gonna be like horrible or something <laughs> but then it turned out and you just love it um many actually <laughs> that's a tough one but there's one like when you say that there's one that comes to mind the most um i was painting michael jackson and uh just like old classic right with the mm -hmm. hat and like a dance pose um and like his music was huge for me as a kid and it just sucked in the middle and it was one that i remember just like and like even i would never ask it took my boyfriend a long time to like give me true <laughs> feelings about the work right he's a geophysicist we're very opposite um so when we first got together he was like everything's amazing right and so whenever i asked him he'd be like it's great i'm like no like i need to have the real your real opinion yeah and i remember asking him about this and he like paused for a minute i was like oh yeah it's bad like i know it's bad <laughs> because you didn't say it my mom too she was like uh it's not looking too good and i just remember being like pissed but it's the one that i needed and i wanted to have in this show so mm. it's uh it turned out in the end which is great i could show a picture at some point but um that's the one i think of the most because i just remember everyone who saw it was like oh yeah like it's not good like yeah. you have never seen you do a bad painting like that was like the first time getting those yeah. like comments from people and uh, and that kind of pushed me a little to be like no like it's not dead like there's no there's no way mm. this painting can be ruined and mm. um it's super like i feel like i almost have to bring that style back again because trying to cover up the mess or the mistake just added such like so much more movement to the piece like it mm -hmm. just yeah it was way more powerful in the end of it but again you gotta stick through it interesting don't throw that baby uh, out I, i've seen that one on your instagram yeah it's like tall long skinny yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it really is good yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it did turn out <laughs> it did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I you have something else that you've been working on too and yeah. that's the children's book yes it just launched this year actually it took me a couple of years to get it to final print and go off um a lovely author from Banff. her name's megan ward i illustrated some of her magazines before and she just wrote this like beautiful children's book it's a rhyming story about just like slowing down and enjoying the little things in life which mm -hmm. is awesome and fitting for it's many. Very fitting for yeah. what we're talking about and today. Yeah, yeah, especially in the last couple of years too. Like it was just like to get outside and to like enjoy, right? So it was right. perfect timing. Um, I was so honored to be chosen as the illustrator for it. It was a huge project. Um, and it's published by Rocky Mountain Books. Nice. It's called The Wonders That I Find. Yep. Um, and again, it's like all the things I love about my job, like working with other people, like trying new things. It was all watercolored and scanned. Half of it was digital. And just seeing people like read it, like and just getting pictures of little kids with it like my nephews and stuff like it is so cool mm. that was a very huge part of my career for sure yeah. well, you have so many cool projects on the go yeah. like the phone cases i can yeah. see yours yeah. right there yeah uh, my wife got the harry potter yes. one yes. Uh, and she absolutely loved it but yeah. i've seen like stickers like yeah. so many different things that you're doing i think it's so cool and uh yeah, you must be like super proud of that. <laughs> I and you know, I don't just this last year I've been like giving myself time to like really like acknowledge it cuz mm. I've truthfully been just like a powerhouse like working non-stop for yeah. seven years that I've never really like looked back at it and it is like it is nuts that I just graduated from my went back to my parents basement just started slanging paintings on the streets basically it. is how it, it started and then yeah it grew to like I make prints of paintings so it's like oh if you can't afford a big one it's like you can still have a piece of my work we can put on stick like I want stickers on here too yeah. t-shirts mugs whatever it's just like my job is so endless like there's so many mm -hmm. directions you can go how about tattoo design have you I designed get, tattoos for people i have but i do get asked that more that's like what i get asked the most is oh, like yeah. design me a tattoo and i always i usually turn people away from it just because the tattoo artist is going to change it like yeah. they know how to work 3d and i only know how to work flat mm. right like it blows my mind what people can do with tattoos yeah. and like how you can see it and draw it so that it looks okay from all these directions <laughs> yeah. so i have done a couple but again like the artist the tattoo artist will always change it into like his own so it's almost mm -hmm. best to go to them yeah. yeah right i'm like i have to charge you for this but they're gonna charge you too so it's like right. almost, yeah, you yeah. know what i mean yeah <laughs> save, but, save your money get them yeah it's yeah. just like mm -hmm. they they're the professionals in that end but um oh but i have i get asked that often i've done a few for some people yeah, yeah. yeah. um just back to the book for a second yeah. i really liked the the theme of it mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and the spirit of it mm -hmm. especially into adulthood mm -hmm. um what we see with exercise is like if you enjoy something, you're going to repeat it. But people believe that the things that they used to do as a kid, mm -hmm. they can't no lo they can no longer do as an adult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I where I got. I was on the website <laughs> looking at the book and things like that, and I was mm -hmm. just thinking, this is so great because 
just because you enjoyed something as as a child doesn't mean you can enjoy it again you as an adult, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I was just thinking about like there's some really great themes in there for adults too. Yeah, in that for book. Sure. About um, about you know the wonders in the little things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, anytime I just go down into Fish Creek, mm-hmm. and there's just there's just some amazing stuff. I, I always see something. <gasps> I see an owl, or I see deer, yeah. or yeah, or I come across some cool cave, and there's yeah. literally bats in there sometimes. <laughs> Fish Creek is the best. Yeah, we're so lucky to have it I in know, our city. I, I feel know. like yeah. yeah, take it for granted all the so, time. We yeah. do. Yeah, no, it is, and those are a lot of the reviews that we we're getting. Are people being like, it's a great message for adults and kids alike, right? Because yeah. mm-hmm. it's yeah, the parents rushing you to the top, and the kids trying to find like yeah. f- getting distracted by all this beauty, and the parents just just rushing her, right? So, mm-hmm. and at the end, she's like, I won't spoil it. Yeah, go buy it. Yeah, go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's a beautiful. I, that's what I mean when I when I read it I was like yes like I don't I don't really care what the terms and conditions are like I would love to be a part of this book it's such a special and the timing seemed so right it was just uh, yeah. I was so lucky to be a part of that project it's mm-hmm. very cool and yeah. there's what's the website do you know it off the top of your head for, um, the, for the book well the the wonders that I find dot com yeah. you can find a link to everything yeah. on there yeah it's on yeah. Amazon it's in bookstores it's uh, all over which is also very cool yeah that's <laughs> yeah. awesome and I yeah. think too, there's there's got to be some parallels there about, you know, um, like really appreciating the little things. Mm-hmm. Maybe in your external world, mm-hmm. it, there's some parallels with gratitude about uh, appreciating the the little things in your own life too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because with gratitude, it's like you're hardly ever appreciating. I'm appreciating that you know I have all this money because mm-hmm. that's kind of more ego centric. Mm-hmm. Whereas it, that's something that's fleeting. It can just come and come and go. But it's more about like. The permanent stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful that I learned to love myself. I'm grateful mm-hmm. for my mm-hmm. family, you know, and things like that. And mm-hmm. So yeah, I just think there's some parallels about really learning to appreciate the little things because what makes you happy later in life? It's the things that sustain you. It's mm-hmm. the the things that you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. It's not the things that are that come and go and this and that and the material yep. stuff. And that's what I find. You know, that's how I coach people through um, some of some of their mental wellness mm-hmm. and anguish mm-hmm. um is is yeah just really delineating between those two and being aware of what truly is sustainable and makes you happy and it's the opposite of what a lot of us people think, think what you first assume yeah, yeah. well we talked a lot about work-life balance yeah. as well right and yeah. it's like something like what you're doing mm-hmm. where I, I talk to people all the time and i say you know this this job that you're working you know mm-hmm. needing to answer emails or all mm-hmm. this these things that stress people out mm-hmm. like when you're done and you look back on it, what's going to matter to you? Mm -hmm. Is it going to matter how many emails you answered? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to matter like what you did with your time and how you spent Mm -hmm. it? Something like what you're doing, you have all these things you can look back at now and go Mm -hmm. like, wow, like look at this memory and Mm -hmm. this painting and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like that's, I think that's the, the, the difference maker between like following your passion and Mm -hmm. doing work for your passion versus just doing work just to make money or Mm -hmm. to, you know, provide a career or to provide food on the table. For sure. I think that's a big difference. Yeah. For sure. And uh, yeah, no, that is a very fair point. And I think about that often of like, would I don't wouldn't have the drive and I wouldn't have the motivation to work 12 hour days like I did mm-hmm. for the whole time if I was working for somebody else. Yeah. Right. And people always are like, oh, you have such a calm demeanor. It's like, yeah, I paint pictures all day. <laughs> like, I paint pictures all day. Like, that. of course, there's stress that comes from it. But when in the grand scheme of things, like, yeah, I'm painting pictures all the time. Yeah. I am pretty chill at that yeah. point. Right. I am stressed because I have deadlines and I have millions of million emails. Yeah. When you talk about emails, it's like <laughs> my soul is just like, yeah, sorry. So many yeah. emails. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, uh, but it's tough because I can work all the time, all day. Like I could do something mm-hmm. for my job at all times. It never ends. And that's where that work-life balance yeah. was so difficult from home because, okay, I wake up, I look to the right, there's my studio. I get an email, oh, I'm in there in a middle, like in a millisecond doing it and now I'm working, right? Mm-hmm. There was no not working time. But now it's like my home, I've never worked in our, my home really. Now, our home now, that's like a home space mm-hmm. <laughs> which I've never really had before. Cool. And it's like, yeah, I'm getting older and like my relationship's important too. Like we need to have that quality time as well which we really haven't for so long because we've both been just like mind on the business yeah. right so it's like now i'm transitioning into that part of my life too where like yeah i could work all the time but like that's not really the point like yeah. i still my work is fulfilling but it's mm-hmm. not that's not gonna feed my soul forever too like i still have to work on other parts of my life yeah. as well and i think when you separate those things sometimes you just appreciate 
those oh, yeah. separate things so much more because yeah. they're not you're, you're not mixing them as yeah. much and right? i couldn't really see like i didn't really didn't know what a life balance was <laughs> it was just yeah. like work all the time even if i'm on a vacation like i'm still answering emails i'm still updating my social media because that's and that's my job too right like yeah. so it's really hard to like detach yeah. from that for sure we've we've talked about a lot of different like avenues of mm-hmm. like how art can help with mental health mm-hmm. and all these different things. Is there a single message or anything that you would throw to the people, mm-hmm. even somebody who's maybe interested in trying art, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but maybe they're nervous or scared mm-hmm. that, you know, they're going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as sucking. That's first of all. Um, <laughs> trust the process. Like we're still going back to that. It's just like you, everything takes time. Nothing's going to come to you in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you just enjoy the aspect of like, Oh, like go back to the draft comment. Like, oh, today is my five minutes to draw my little giraffe. And then, like, when you see that improvement, that's what you got to work for. It's like seeing the improvement, you'll see the point, you'll see what you've done, and you just got to trust the process. Yeah. I don't know. No, well, I take, don't know. Right? Take, take it from Tay. <laughs> trust the process, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I, uh, well, I, I think it's. I think that's the perfect, the perfect phrase, and mm-hmm. <laughs> I use it all the time, too, yeah. with my clients. And, yeah. Yeah, yes. and we we need more things to do that don't necessarily involve screens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love you know you are producing right, and and it's um, production before consumption. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I think is something that we all should try you know in a little bit more. Maybe not you, but we all, <laughs> we the royal <laughs> the royal we. No. Um, yeah, because yeah, I think we we've just become a, a society of, of just, we just consume, right? We just mm-hmm. consume media. We just mm-hmm. consume things. I get stuck on there. Too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's more about the producing because when you're producing, you're going to be in a much better mental state mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and emotional state. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if, if someone's hearing this and I don't want to draw a giraffe, that's trivial. What am I going to do with it? There's deeper, there's yeah. deeper purpose yeah. to this, yeah. to these things, right? Yeah. It's all about the practice, right? Yeah. yeah. Just time yeah. and giving yourself time because nobody gives themselves time. That's right. I'm, a victim of that too i don't give myself time with other aspects of my life mm-hmm. work sure but yeah. <laughs> but it's a very common issue i feel like that a lot of people don't give time you want everything right now yeah that's yeah. true you want to be healthy right now you want to look better right now or you want money right now right like everything's like you need it you want it instantly because we're stuck on well, these things yeah. that instant and, gratification yeah yeah. 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 yeah 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 and people are 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 selling it to you they're only kind of they're still not really selling they're selling the idea of it and mm-hmm. people are buying mm-hmm. but there really are there really are no shortcuts yeah and it, that's okay yeah you know that's totally okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. totally and it makes you better right yeah For sure. of course um yeah. This has been a really great conversation. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, uh, one more time, where can people find you? Where can people find your work? Because I know um, if people are listening to this, like you have to go and check out some yeah, of Tay's work. You have to go and lay your eyes on it. Go consume some media. Some colorful, glittery. Yeah, <laughs> we just told you to stop. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> um, my Instagram, my website, my YouTube is Taytayski, T-A-Y-T-A-Y-S-K-I. Um, Google that. You, everything that I have online, you'll find it under that name for sure. Yeah. My YouTube has all the like tutorials we we're talking about, those paint nights there's like 75 paint nights on my youtube that are like two hours step yeah. by step you can follow along paint and, whatever you want and anybody can do those like anybody yeah my my daughter who's uh who's 11 she yeah. just did one yeah you show yeah. me oh so no way yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. honestly anyway I, I may break it down into the simplest strokes like simple shapes and like for many different levels of artists come to them never painted before painted before and you can you always come out with something cool at the end great idea yeah, awesome. yeah i gotta do that too yes you do yeah there's so yeah. many different things like landscapes yeah. a squirrel we got the squirrel over yep. here a cheeseburger <laughs> we'll to, we'll bernie sanders yeah. oh yeah i like yeah. i saw yeah. that one that was good <laughs> yeah. that was hilarious yeah. we'll have to do a wellness dojo paint night or something hey mm-hmm. i'd yeah. love that yeah yeah well, thanks awesome. so much for coming on. This is so much fun. Yeah. It's nice to nice to have you in studio as yeah, well. So. Of course. No, yeah. thanks for having me. This was awesome. It's my first podcast. So. No way. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> you Thank handled you it so like much. a pro. So. <laughs> my palms have been sweaty the whole time. <laughs> yeah. awesome. awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much. You're yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Well, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.